106 facts about the 106 alone Pokemon. Let's do this. Roll it. Roll its Ultra Moon Dex and Tree references Ash's Roll It from the anime. It states that Roll It's are known to use their trainers' pockets and bags as their nests, which is what Ash's Roll It does all the time. Dart Tricks. This is what Dartrix looks like with his eyes open. Decidueye. Decidueye is based on the Still Owl, a bird that was native to Hawaii before going extinct. So quite literally, Decidueye is a ghost of an extinct owl. Litten. Litten regrows his coat twice a year, and when the time comes, it'll set his own body on fire and burn away the old fur. Toracat. Toracat's base speed stat is a whopping 30 points higher than his evolution, Incineroar. And even Litten has a higher speed stat as well, by 10 points. Incineroar. Incineroar's moon density confirms that it has a navel, which is another word for belly button. But this shouldn't be possible because all Pokemon are known to hatch from eggs, so no umbilical cord was detached from Litten's belly. Another fun fact is that Incineroar can't learn the move Incinerate, which also makes no sense. Poplio. All of Poplio's balloons are made from his snot, as confirmed in the Sun Dexent tree. Brion. Brion's name can be a reference to Beyonce and Rihanna, since it's pronounced Brion. And also, Brion is known as the Popstar Pokemon, which further backs this theory. Primarina. Primarina has the highest special attack and special defense of all starter Pokemon, making it incredibly OP for speedrunning Sun and Moon. Pinky Peck. Pinky Peck was the first Generation 7 Pokemon to be revealed, as this wireframe model was shown during the first trailer. Trumbeak. Trumbeak is one of only 27 Pokemon that have not appeared in any Switch Pokemon game. It didn't even appear in Pokemon Snap. Toucanon. In the anime, Kahili is shown holding Toucanon like a bazooka while it uses the move Beak Blast. And what's funny is that she did this while playing golf. Also, another fun fact is that the colors of Shiny Toucanon's beak is pink, violet, and blue, which happens to be the colors of the opposite side of the color spectrum. Young Goose. Young Goose was imported from another region to deal with the lone Rattatas, since they are an invasive species, and this relates to what actually happened in Hawaii in 1883. Gumshoes. Junichi Masuda was well aware of all the Twitter memes about Gumshoes' resemblance to Donald Trump, but stated that Gumshoes was already in the works well before 2016, and Game Freak did not attend the resemblance. And personally, I don't know about that one. Also, another fun fact is that Gumshoes has the longest German Pokemon name, at 12 letters, with the name Mongoose Spectre. Grubbin. Funny enough, Grubbin is Rookity's natural enemy, and that Rookity will normally fly away to avoid being pinched by Grubbin's mandibles. Chargebug. Vikavil's Sword Dexentry states that it will often carry a Chargebug as a battery to fire off powerful attacks, which is cool because Chargebug's unique ability is battery. Also, there's even a card where the player can attach Chargebug to a Vikavolt to give it two lightning energies, further showing that it's basically a double A battery. Vikavolt. Vikavolt is slower than its pre evolution Grubbin by three points, which is ironic because it literally looks like a jet. Also, another fact is that Solvigal's Vikavolt was the first Pokemon in the anime to have his nature confirmed, which in this case is mild. Crab Brawler. Crab Brawler's codename during development was Crab 1, which probably means it was the first crab design. And I say this because back in the red and green days, there was an unused Dragon type Pokemon codenamed Dragon 4, which I'm going to assume was scrapped over Dragonite. Crab Abominable. Crab Abominable originally evolved by leveling up in Mount Lanakila in the Alola region, but since that area is not accessible in Scarlet and Violet, it simply evolves with an Ice Stone now. Also, Crab Abominable has the longest English name, Crab Abominable. Oricorio. The colors of Oricorio perfectly correspond to the names of the islands that they appear on, because the name Meli Meli is the Hawaiian word for yellow, Akala is pink, Pony is purple, and Ula Ula is red. Cutiefly. Cutiefly's Ultra Moon Dexogen confirms that it's able to detect aura, which could mean that if there are any aura guardians who live in Alola, they would probably use a cutiefly, or its evolved form. Rimbumbi. Rimbumbi's signature move pollen puffs are used as a cooking ingredient for humans. Also, another fact is that Rimbumbi ties Poltegeist for being the smallest fully evolved Pokemon. Rockruff. Rockruff's German name is Waffles, which is one of the cutest Pokemon names that I've ever heard. Also, another fact was that Rockruff was the only rock type Pokemon that couldn't learn the move Sandstorm, but this was fixed in Scarlet and Violet. Lycanroc. Lycanroc is tied with Mr. Mind for having the most abilities out of all Pokemon, with the count being 6, which is honestly more amazing for Mr. Mime since Lycanroc has 3 forms. Wishy Washy. Wishy Washy's solo form has the lowest base stat total out of all Pokemon, with it only being 175, which is pretty funny given that this Pokemon in school form is known as the Demon of the Sea, according to multiple dex entries. Marini. Sometimes when a wild Corsola calls for help in an SOS battle, a wild Marina will appear, and actually attack Corsola instead of the player's Pokemon, since it's Corsola's natural predator, which would be pretty unfortunate when shiny hunting. Toxapex. The anime has the Toxapex of a different color, and it isn't even a shiny. Mudbray. Mudbray's valid dexterity states that, though a slow walker, Mudbray is plenty strong. Its pace doesn't change even when loaded with 50 times its own body weight, which means that this 3-foot donkey could carry 12,125 pounds, which is about the weight of 3 cars. 
Mudsdale. Hapu's Mudsdale was defeated by Ash's Pikachu after it splashed it with water, allowing Pikachu to finish it off with Gigavolt Havoc, which interestingly confirms how Ash defeated Brox's Onyx in the fifth episode of the anime. Dewpider. Dewpider is actually an awesome Pokemon because it's based on the Diving Bell Spider, a spider that spends the majority of its life underwater and traps a bubble of oxygen within a net of silk to keep breathing. So Dewpider is essentially the inverse of the spider, which is a really fun concept. Araquanid. Araquanid is a terrifying Pokemon because, according to his son Dexon Tree, it says that when it delivers a headbutt, small Pokemon are sucked into his bubble or they drown. But weirdly enough, Araquanid is a caring Pokemon because its moon destiny tree states that it will protect vulnerable weak Pokemon in its water bubble. But wouldn't they drown as well? Fomantis. According to a sword Dyson tree, Fomantis emits a pleasant sweet scent when bathing in the sunlight, and will attract bug type Pokemon to swarm around it. But isn't Fomantis a grass type Pokemon? So I guess this plant likes to live on the edge. Lurantis. Lurantis is based on the Orchid Mantis, a bug that disguises itself as a plant. But as with Dewpider, Lurantis is the inverse of this. It's actually a plant masquerading as a bug. Morlul. Morlul has the ability Rain Dish, which slightly recovers its HP in the rain, but it has no way of sending up rain whatsoever. And it doesn't even learn a water type move to use Max Geyser with to create rain either, so it's kind of a useless ability. Shinautic. Shinautic's counterpart is Parasect because they have identical base stat totals, are both mushroom Pokemon, and they appear in the lush jungle. But funny enough, Shinautic's Ultra Moon Destiny states that it doesn't get along with Parasect at all. It probably knows that the mushroom on Parasect's back has taken over its body and zombified it. It probably doesn't want to get infected. Salandit. The reason why male Salandit can't evolve is due to malnutrition, since they give most of their food to the females of their species. But one has to wonder, what would happen if a male Salandit was well nourished under the care of his trainer? Would it evolve then? Salazzle. Salazzle is pretty much the pinnacle of a poison type Pokemon, since his corrosion ability allows it to poison steel type Pokemon, and even other poison type Pokemon as well. So it probably has the most potent poison in the world, even more deadly than Eternatus's. Stuffle. Stuffle has a tag on his butt that's meant to represent the tag of a teddy bear. And no, Stuffle isn't a stuffed animal that came to life, but this tag is actually an organ that it uses to communicate with other Stuffle by emitting an odor. So basically they communicate through farting. But where? When battling the fuse Luzamine and Sun and Moon, all of her Pokemon take on a more aggressive facial expression. Well, except for Beware, who keeps the same clues expression that Beware are known to have. Bonsuit. In Little Cup battles, Bonsuit is considered to be completely useless. Even Osmogon says not to use Bonsuit because it's a waste of a team slot. Steeny. The only Steeny that has been seen in Pokemon media is the one owned by Mallow. No other Steeny has appeared in the anime or manga. Tassarina. According to the now offline Sun and Moon website, it's stated that Tassarina's weak spot is his crown, and simply touching it will make Tassarina completely defenseless. Kinda sounds like a sexual innuendo to me. Comfy. This is what Comfy looks like without his flowers. Also, another fun fact is that Comfy is the only non-grass-type Pokemon in the Grass Egg group, which is pretty weird. Oranguru. Oranguru's Ultra Sun Destiny Tree states that it throws balls and gives orders to other Pokemon, which technically means that it could be a Pokemon trainer. Another fact is that the people of ancient times thought Oranguru was a human, and called their species the people of the forest. Passamian. There is a banned anime episode that was meant to feature Passamian, and it was banned for, well, just look for yourself. Wimpod. Wimpod's fresh name is Sofkipu, which is based on the phrase Sofkipa, which literally means save yourself if you can. So when Wimpod is fleeing and screaming Sofkipu, it's literally saying, save yourself if you can! Glissopod. Kensaku Nabana, the designer of Glissopod, explained that it took six months to design it, and confirmed that this is the average time it takes to fully design a Pokemon, complete with moves, abilities, and dex entries. Sandy Gas. Sandy Gas's shiny coloration is based on the black sand beaches of Hawaii, which happens to be one of my favorite memories of visiting Hawaii when I was five. Palosan. Palosan's shape is classified as serpentine, which means it resembles a snake or a worm. Although by looking at it, Palosan resembles neither. It makes you wonder what is under all of that sand. Pikumiku. Pikumiku actually has its own signature move, Purify, which cures the status condition of its target. And if it does cure a status condition, it will also recover 50% of its own HP as well. But due to the very situational circumstances, most players will run Recover instead, which makes this a pretty obscure signature move that a lot of people don't know about. Type Null. In the anime, Type Null was often referred to as Silvalli, which could be because Type Null is simply Silvalli, but with a containment helmet on. Another fun fact is that in the games, Type Null was originally going to be called Type Full, before the Aether Foundation's experiments failed. Silvalli. Silvalli is one of the few Pokemon that can devolve, because when the Aether Foundation put his helmet on, it became Type Null. Another fun fact is that Silvalli's ability, RKS System, sounds like Arceus when you say it slowly. RKS. A third fun fact is that Gladion is mentioned in Savali's Dex entry as the boy who evolved it, which might be the only time a main character has been mentioned in a Pokedex entry. 
Minier. Minier is Ultra Sun Daisuji states that it lives in the ozone layer where it becomes food for stronger Pokemon. And when it tries to run away, it falls to the ground. And in the anime episode showering the world with love, we see a Rayquaza in the sky literally eating them. And Ash and his friends are all delightfully watching. Kamola. This is Kamola's walking animation, which is pretty dang interesting. Turtonator. You can make bombs from Turtonator's poop. Togedemaru. Togedemaru is the first electric steel type Pokemon that isn't related to the Magnemite line, which is pretty wild when you think about it. Mimikyu. There's a theory that Mimikyu might be the ghost of a dead Pichu that wants it to evolve, which is why it tries so hard to mimic one and knows a lot of his moves. And for more info on this, you should check out my Scary Pokemon Iceberg video. Bruxish. Bruxish's bright colors and his dazzling ability might be a reference to dazzling camouflage, a technique used by ships in World War I to confuse enemies as which way they were heading by using disorienting patterns. Drampa. The Pokemon with the longest name in the franchise is a Drampa nicknamed Grandpa Forest, which comes out to 14 characters including the space. Another funny fact is that Drampa's son Desiji states that if a child that made friends with is bullied, it will find the bully's house and burn it to the ground, which is hilarious. Delmise. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can randomly encounter Delmise in the Isle of Armor. But what's strange about this is that Delmise does not appear in the Isle of Armor's Pokedex. Jangmo-O. Jangmo-O was the very first Pokemon design for Pokemon Sun and Moon. Hakamo-O. Hakamo-O's Ultra Moon Desiji states that people make pots and pans out of Hakamo-O scales, which makes you wonder if the place you used to make curry with in Sword and Shield are made out of Hakamo-O scales. Komo. Komo's signature Z move is Clangorous Soul Blaze, a move that attacks the opponent and gives Komo an Omni Boost. And what's cool about this move is that it was technically transferred to Sword and Shield as a downgraded version for Komo, with the regular move being called Clangorous Soul. Tapu Koko. In the anime, there's a shiny Tapu Koko from a parallel universe, which confirms that shiny legendaries do exist, but in different dimensions. Tapu Lele. Each of the Tapu shells are made to resemble a different animal, with Tapu Lele resembling a butterfly, Tapu Koko resembling a rooster, Tapu Bulu resembling a bull, and Tapu Fini resembling a swordfish. Along with that, these four animals most likely represent the four Hawaiian gods, with the butterfly representing the god of peace, rain, and fertility, the rooster representing the god of sky, the bull representing the god of war, and the swordfish representing the god of the ocean. Tapu Bulu Tapu Bulu is responsible for destroying a village on the island it guards because it was enraged that the locals built a thrifty mega mart near a sacred grounds. So if you're wondering why this area looked pretty beat up, that's why. Tapu Fini As shown in the anime, Tapu Fini is capable of creating a fog in which people would think and see and converse with their deceased loved ones, which is actually a pretty awesome ability. Cosmog Despite the fact that Cosmog cannot learn any attacking moves, there is still a way to see his attacking animation in battle, and the way to do this is to use a Zora or Zoroark with their illusion ability. Cosmoim Cosmoim has the least noble moves out of all of all Pokemon, with it only knowing three, Cosmic Power, Teleport, and Splash, and two of them are from his pre-evolution. Also, Cosmoim is tied with Celesteela for being the heaviest Pokemon, and Ash just casually held it in the anime. Solgaleo. Solgaleo's shiny is based on a solar flare, while his counterpart Lunala's colors is based on a blood moon. Lunala. As of Pokemon Journeys, Lunala and Zapdos have identical cries. Just listen. I guess I can understand why, because Zapdos had a pretty questionable cry in the previous anime. It's Zapdos! But nothing beats his Pokemon Stadium cry. Sounded like a horse bird thing. Naligo. In Pokemon Journeys, there's a shiny Naligo that belongs to Luzumi's family. And this Naligo happens to be named Lily, named by Mon, who had no memory of his family after being lost in the Ultra Wormhole. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's an alternate dimension where humans are Pokemon. And this is the counterpart of Lily from that world. Not to mention that Pheromosa looks a lot like Luzumin, which lends credence to this theory. Buzzwool. Buzzwool literally slurps up a Snorlax in the anime, which is pretty terrifying looking. Pheromosa. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pheromosa's catch rate was 255, the highest catch rate a Pokemon could have, which meant that it was a guaranteed capture. Exert Tree. Exert Tree, a Pokemon with no nose or mouth, can't let the move snore, which makes absolutely no sense. Another fun fact is that Exert Tree can learn a ton of grass type moves because it's a play on the name Power Plant, which is something Exert Tree invaded, and its home world is practically a humongous power plant in and itself. Celesteela. Celesteela babies actually exist, as seen in the anime. Cartana. In the anime, Cartana speaks in the human language, except in reverse, and this is what it sounds like. Once again, I cut a worthless object. Once again, I cut a worthless object. Cut again, 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 again. I cut a worthless object. Once again, a worthless object. Again, I cut again, again. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. 
Guzzlord. Guzzlord is one of the first Pokemon confirmed outside of Dex Entry to unlock a character, with the character being a follower who was working for Looker. Necrozma. Pokemon cannot decide whether Necrozma is an Ultra Beast or not, because in the main series games and in Pokemon Home, it is considered not to be an Ultra Beast. But in the Adventures manga, it is an Ultra Beast, and is even captured by a Beast Ball. But then in the trading card game, its base form is not an Ultra Beast, but its other forms are. And then in Pokemon Duel, all of its forms are classified as Ultra Beasts. So it's pretty unclear what the heck Necrozma is exactly. Magirna. Magirna's event codes never expired. They all still work to this day and can be found on Bulbapedia. Go ahead and pause this video and scan this QR code for a free Magirna and Sun and Moon. But wait, click on the subscribe button after you pause the video. Alright, you got it? Nice. And here's the Japanese, Taiwanese, PAL, and Korean QR codes if you want those too. Marshadow. Marshadow's shiny form may appear indistinguishable from its regular form, but its true shiny colors are revealed in its zenith form, which can only be seen when it's in action. Poipole. According to his Ultra Sun Dex entry, Poipole is a popular starter Pokemon in its native world, with its native world being Ultra Megapolis. Naganadol. Every single base stat of every Ultra Beast is a prime number, which is a number that's only divisible by itself and one. Every stat of every Ultra Beast, except for Naganadol's speed, which has a value of 121, which is odd and OCD inducing. Stack Attacka. According to some in game dialogue, Stack Attacka is actually composed of approximately 150 different life forms, which is pretty wild. Blastphalon. A shiny Spurgle that sketched a Blastphalon's mind blown move will launch a shiny Blastphalon's head, which just looks hilarious. Zerora. Zerora's shiny is probably a lot more common than its regular coloration, since over a million Sword and Shield players took part in the max trade battles against Zerora, which rewarded a shiny Zerora. So basically, it's a new red Gyarados. Melton. Despite the fact that it has an evolution, Melton can be affected by the item Eviolite, which may be because it can only evolve in Pokemon Go and never in the games. Melmetal. Weirdly enough, Melmetal is coded to learn Thunder Punch upon evolving in the main series games. But again, Melton can't evolve outside of Pokemon Go, so this code is completely useless. Alolan Rattata. According to the official Sun and Moon website, Alolan Rattata adapted to its appearance as a result of the introduction of Young Goose into Alola, which forced it to become nocturnal. But interestingly, in the anime they say that Young Goose was introduced after Rattata adapted into this form. So which is it? Alone Raticate. Despite the fact that Raticate has existed since Generation 1, not a single one of them was scanned by a Pokedex. Not until Alone Raticate was seen in the Sun and Moon anime. Alone Raichu. The main reason Raichu takes on this regional form is because it's diet of pancakes. So basically, all you need to do to wake up the psychic powers of a Pikachu is to feed it a bunch of pancakes, which is hilarious. Alone Sandshrew. Alone Sandshrew's Sun Destiny states that it can't roll his body into a ball, and yet it can learn Rollout, Gyra Ball, and Ice Ball. And there's even an Alone Sand Slash using Ice Ball in the anime. Alone Sand Slash. If you take a closer look at Alone Sand Slash's arm and its official art, you might notice that it's not actually attached to his body, but instead to one of his spikes. So if one used a move like Icicle Spear, it might actually fire off his own arm. Alolan Vulpix. Alolan Vulpix is the only unevolved Pokemon to get a V-Star card. Not even Pikachu, Eevee, or any other popular first stage Pokemon has one. Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales is the only Pokemon in Legends Arceus that can only be obtained in game through evolution. You can literally find any other Pokemon in the game by some other method. Alolan Diglett. Alolan Diglett's hairs are actually indicators of emotion. If angry, the hair stands straight up. If happy, they wing around. And if sad, they droop down. Alolan Dugtrio. Alolan Dugtrio's metallic hair actually makes perfect sense in a wine based region because it's based on something called Peli's hair, which looks like hair but is actually volcanic glass stretched out thin. And this is a natural occurrence. Alolan Meowth. The anime explains that Matari's Alolan Meowth stole Team Rocket's Meowth's money to buy an airline ticket to Kanto. And just the thought of a Pokemon walking up to an airport and purchasing a ticket is quite amusing. Alolan Persian. The size of Alolan Persian's head is actually meant to be a pun, playing on the fact that it's described in his Pokedex to be full of itself, or in other words, big headed. Alolan Geodude. The concept artwork for Alolan Geodude shows that it could actually lose its hair when being hit. Alolan Graveler. There's an in-game trade in Tapu Village that offers an Alolan Graveler in exchange for a Haunter, which allows a player to obtain a trade evolution without needing to find someone else, which is pretty rare. Alolan Golem. It is stated in Alolan Golem's Sun Destiny Tree that it is known to seize nearby Geodude and fire them from his back. And this is even shown in the anime. Alolan Grimer. Alolan Grimer loves to eat Tauros poop. Alolan Muk. Unlike Ketonian Muk, Alolan Muk actually doesn't smell bad. This is because all of his toxins are contained in his body. Another fact is that Alolan Muk are known to eat Trubbish and Garbodor. Alolan Executor. Surprisingly, Alolan Executor appears 17 years before its official debut in Sun and Moon. It was shown on the Japanese booster box for the Jungle expansion. And finally, Alolan Marowak. The flames on Alolan Marowak's bone is stated to be the spirit of his dead mother, according to his Let's Go Dex entry. And there you go, 106 facts about the 106 Alolan Pokemon. 
And if you want to help out with the next video in the series, leave some comments down below about the Galarian and the Suian Pokemon. The more obscure the fact is, the better. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey, did you know there was an evil Mega Gardevoir during the X and Y era? Yeah, and that's just one fact from my Kale's Fact video here. Or if you want to start from the beginning in Kanto, click on the playlist right here. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.